Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and you join us today back up to the dealership for two pieces of work. First of all, part three of the screen repair work. So this is the situation where we have the right-hand screen in the 458 where the time text box is um, corrupted or becomes corrupted. Stage two of the work today is hopefully to have the brake recall um, repair work performed. Now the dealership has ordered in 100 units to remediate this brake recall. The units are scheduled to arrive today, I believe. So hopefully they will arrive today and they can repair my car at the same time as doing part three on remediating the error in the screen binnacle. Now the work that they're doing to repair the screen binnacle today is replacing the nip module. And the nip module is situated, situated behind the glove box and it sends the information to the screen. Hopefully <laughs> there should be nothing else that, that can repair this, this situation. So hopefully that will resolve the error. First of all, I'll provide you with a recap and then we're going to drop in, get a coffee and then we'll stop and I'll give you some details on the actual fix and how it was resolved. And yes, there's, a, there's the clue there. It is resolved, finally. So there's three key items um, that are implemented for the screen setup in a 458. Um, that is the NIP module, which actually is the sending of information, the LVDS cable that configures the LVDS cable that sends information from the NIP module to the actual NQS screen binnacle and the, the NQS screen binnacle. And by the way, the NQS screen binnacle is the whole screen binnacle. So it's not just the right hand screen, left hand screen. You can't separate them out. It's the whole screen binnacle. Um, and also, if you, if you replace the screen binnacle, obviously you, you have to make sure that the correct one is installed to the car that references the colouring that you chose on the rev counter on the, on the, in the centre. So that's how much the actual NQS module actually contains, the whole screen binnacle. And it's quite impressive. And that screen binnacle alone, by the way, is £7,200-odd pounds pre that. That will give you an appreciation of the costs involved um, for the remediation of this issue. So first of all, it went back to Dick Lovett and they had the LVDS cable replaced. Now, that's logical because the LVDS cable could have had a stress fracture and caused a problem um, with regards to sending information from the NIP module to the NQS screen binnacle. And obviously, the LV LVDS cable is the cheapest item of those three. So it's logical to try and change the cheapest item. That is the most logical item that would have failed. Unfortunately, when they changed the LVDS cable, that didn't correct the problem. The, the, the issue still occurred. So we're just going through Avery, by the way. Here, this is a beautiful village, and you've got these old ancient stones on the side, very, very famous for this stone setup, much like, um, much like Stonehenge. So this is linked across and supposed to point to, in some way, Stonehenge. So this is a beautiful area that we live in in, in Wiltshire. But uh, coming away from the aside, getting back to the, the problem in hand, so the LVDS cable was replaced. That didn't correct the problem. Um, then they just, uh, Dick Lovett spoke to uh, Ferrari in Europe and there was a decision made that, okay, it's very likely it's the actual NQS screen binnacle that's at fault. So the screen binnacle um, was ordered. Then the car had to go in. They had to take the settings, the firmware configuration from my NQS screen binnacle, send it to Ferrari and they then uh, blue, which is a techie term, but in effect updated the new screen binnacle with my configuration setup. And then that screen binnacle was sent to Dick Lovitz and then Dick Lovitz, the car went in again and Dick Lovitz um, installed that new screen binnacle. The car came back and that's where we were at with, with part two. So we're just going up to get a coffee now. And once we've got a coffee, we'll do a stop by and um, I'll explain exactly how the issue was resolved and some nuances I've noticed past the remediation of the problem.
just driving on our way to get a coffee and look what we've got that's pulled out in front of us that we're following. A 250 SL. Beautiful. It just shows you the difference in technology. This car, the 458, is as flat as anything, of course, relative to the, to the 250. And that is all over the place. I mean, I'm not knocking it. I love the car. I love the old SLs. Beautiful car, especially SL300. But who doesn't love an SL300? But if you just look at the body roll on it, it's um, pretty impressive. Probably a lot more cushion ride in that than it is in this as well. <laughs> So we just stopped off in Marlborough, got our coffee. So we're now gonna pop up and stop off and give you a rundown of um, exactly how this issue was resolved. So we've just pulled in and I'll give you an update now um, on the latest changes um, that the car went in for to correct this, um, this screen issue problem. So as I mentioned before, it's had the LVDS cable replaced and it's had the NQS screen binnacle replaced. They also call it the screen cluster. By the way, just as a bit of an aside, we've pulled in here at Silbury Hill. It's one of the lovely little monuments that we've got around Wiltshire, um, uh, along with the Avebury stones that we've already shown you that we drove through. This is a beautiful place to live. But getting away from that, Let's talk to you more about the actual changes that were made to the car. So the car went in for the third time and it went in to have the knit module replaced. Now, to recap, this is the item that communicates via the LVDS cable to the NQS screen binnacle. So this in effect sends the information to the, to the screen binnacle. The car went in, it had that replaced. Thankfully, they already had a knit module in stock. They replaced it on the car. It literally was only a day it took to replace the knit module and it came back all issues resolved, no problems now. So this has cost, this has cost it Lavit quite a bit to replace this. Um, and I'm very thankful because I haven't been billed at all. It, Dick Lovitz have kindly covered this off totally. And yes, the problem did exist when I collected the car, but I don't take anything for granted, you know? There's no need to be unpleasant when you're, when you're dealing with dealerships. Dick, Dick Lovitz has been very good to me and I'm very thankful for that. So thanks very much, Dick Lovitz, very much appreciated. What I also wanted to talk to you about was some of the nuances. Again, motorcyclists going crazy speeds. They talk about Ferrari car drivers. What about them? Anyway, um, around a lovely monument and you can tell it, still hear them screaming up the road as well. I mean, Christ, you wonder how motorcyclists have problems on the roads, you know? So I wanted to talk to you about some, um, some nuances I've noticed with regards to how the actual system works on a 458 and probably how it works on other supercars as well. Um, this is with regards to how the screen is updated from the NIT module. So one of the nuances I've noticed is that when you turn the ignition on, there's a slight latency between the NIT module communicating with the NQS screen binnacle. Now, obviously, as I've said to you before, they're not going to have the fastest processes in there, so it's not going to be the quickest of systems. But when I, if I show you when I turn the ignition on, you'll see there's quite a bit of latency, and then it will write to that top right hand text box. You get the good old Ferrari beeping. There you go. So that was about 10 seconds while before turning ignition on and actually writing to the screen. Now that's not a bad thing, that's, that's not a fault. It's just how it is, it just shows you the, the power of the CPUs that are installed in these supercars. Remember this technology is around 2009 when this car was designed? Yeah, it's a 2015 model. 
but this hasn't got updated electronics in it. It will be the same electronics in all the other 458s. And we know it's got an updated firmware from for the 2014 um, Speciali series onwards in this particular car, because it's a 2015 car and they had all that firmware installed. But the electronics are still the same. So the speed of transfer from the NIT module to the NQS screen binnacle will be the same across all the cars. Let me know in the comments below, what sort of latency do you know on transferring to the screen? So when you turn the ignition on, to actually see the information, to see your time being displayed, in that right hand top text box, let me know how long it takes on your car. Or maybe it's instant on your car, or maybe it's the same latency around 10 seconds as you noticed on my car. It'd be very interesting to know. Drop me a comment below, let me know. Also, I've, I've noticed that um, with regards to updates to the screen binnacle, when people start, when some 458 owners start their car, some 458s, the engine management system, um, the engine check light is called, that sometimes goes out after about 20 seconds after the car's been started. For some people, on my car, the engine check light goes out straight away. As soon as I start the car, the engine check light goes off. Now, does that mean my car's less worn? Probably not. It's probably the, just the firmware. It's probably because this has got the latest firmware in it, it's, it checks whether or not there's a, there's a problem on the main ECU unit and then it fires up the update and, and switches off the engine, engine check light straight away. Probably the earlier firmwares didn't do that check until later on. So probably that's what, what that situation is. But again, let me know in your comments below. So that is when you start your car, how quickly does your engine check light go out? Be inter interesting to know across all the different 458 models, all the, sorry, all the different 458 years, um, what happens with your different cars. So just to summarise, the car's been back to did love it multiple times with regards to this, this screen binnacle issue, this error that I've been receiving where the, the text box is displayed with, a, with a, like a white and blue flag and then it locks the right hand screen. It's gone back, it's had the LVDS cable replaced, it's had the actual NQS screen binnacle replaced and now the, the NIT module has been replaced. By the way, the NIT module is situated behind the glove box and it's now resolved. So unfortunately, it's been quite an expensive trip for Dick Lovitz to replace all those three items. Um, and I'm really appreciated to Dick Lovitz. So thank you very much, Dick Lovitz. You've really looked after me. I can't thank you enough. It's been really good of you to, to just be very persistent and get this problem resolved. They've been very tenacious with regards to just, you know, getting the car back in each time and, um, look, you know, getting, getting the items changed to, to fault track through and to overcome the error. It's very tricky resolving these types of issues with these cars because you'd think, oh, just put, an, just put a diagnostic system on it, read from the ECUs, it should tell you straight away. No, it doesn't. With a lot of these issues, the only way you can go forward to resolving them is systematically replace items in the, in the chain and hope that it actually resolves the problem. And this is what's happened with regards to this situation. It's just unfortunate that it's taken the replacement of all those three items and it was the last item that was replaced that resolved the problem. Um, but, you know, that's how it works out. You know, the screen binnacle alone is over £7,000 pre-VAT. You can, you can estimate, you know, the NIT module is comparable price and you've got the LVDS cable, not obviously nowhere near as much, but it's going to be expensive. And then the labour on top of that, there have been substantial labour charges. I know Dick Love, it's obviously they're just paying their, their technicians whatever the going rate is, their internal costs. But obviously to me, it'll be what, 160 an hour, something like that. So um, again, thanks, Dick Lovett. You know, you've looked after me. You've get, provided me a great car. Um, really love the car. And you've now resolved this only issue that was left remaining. So really thankful to Dick Lovett. Really appreciate it. Thank you. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you drop some comments below and give us a like, give us a thumbs up. That's very important. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is now the end of the screen binnacle saga, the screen issue saga. So this is part three and the end. It's all resolved now. Hopefully, hopefully there won't be any more glitches. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.